clearly IT is the number one driver for the quality agenda. Right. Uh, I think the quality agenda is the number one driver for the cost agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, frankly, getting data on the table in front of clinicians right is what really motivates change. And they don't particularly care what the board and the CEO say or the premier says or the minister says. It's very interesting. But at the end of the day, what really does motivate them is when you say, we look different than our peers. And if different isn't better, they're not very happy about that. None of us are as humans right. to hear you're in the lower lower quartile or decile of performance. Right. Human nature. Human nature. <laughs> so when you get that on the table, and of course the first reaction is, well, the data's wrong. And once you confirm if it is in fact wrong, you have to right. fix it. But more often than not, the data is extracted from the chart, so it, it is what we did. Uh, we then get people saying, well, gee, that doesn't look right, or what are we doing differently? Right. And it really empowers people to dig in and begin talking about, well, who's at the top of that? band and do we need to go and look at what they're doing and are they doing things differently than we are. And frankly, when you are at the top of that band, it gives you an opportunity to be proud and, and a little bit boastful and say, we are providing the best care in the country for this population of patients. And I think that's very motivating. But both ends are extremely effective, both the pride and to some degree the embarrassment. Right. Uh, those are important things for So it drives humans. people to learn from each other. Absolutely. Right? And the more we get that out there, right. uh, particularly amongst providers and frontline providers, I don't think anyone likes hearing, hey, Anita, you're in the lower decile. What do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah. Uh, right. Not good. No. Not good. And, no. and I think government is increasingly saying, well, we're not funding you differently. Right. Why is this range and variation acceptable? So there'll always be a range, but I think the push has to be to narrow the standard deviations right. so that the range is more acceptable as opposed to a broad... Um, normally distributed curve. Mm -hmm. Maybe the last thing, if I yes, could, on, on technology absolutely. is as we move to an increasingly home-based system, mm -hmm. uh, one need only look to some of the technologies that are available that allow, that allow you, with your parents' wishes, to monitor them, be that through the internet and video cameras or through telephone devices. So we operate a very large respiratory group. With a small attachment to your phone, you can blow into a device that then, through the telephone line, will record in your respirologist's office the um, lung volume that you're able to engage in that day. Right. And rather than bringing you into an acute care environment where your lungs are already somewhat compromised, exposing you to a bunch of nasty bugs and things, we can actually have a, a nurse provider call and say, you need to adjust your ventilator, you need to adjust your, your inhaler today and it may be because of environment, it may be because of whatever, a disease progression. So just a very small example of how home-based technologies can increasingly help support people and prevent them from coming back into the system.